so far we've been looking at the electron configuration of neutral atoms. But we can also do this for ions. So, for example, here is the orbital diagram for a neutral oxygen atom. If you're trying to make an oxygen anion with negative one charge, making an anion is fairly straightforward. All you have to do is follow the same rules for filling in the electrons. So, in other words, oxygen with a negative one charge will follow the same configuration as a neutral fluorine atom. Those have the same number of electrons, so those two species are called isoelectronic. The oxygen with a negative one charge has one more electron, and we would fill that in just like we were filling the electron configuration of fluorine. If we keep going and add another electron, now instead of being isoelectronic with fluorine, oxygen with a negative two is isoelectronic with neon. So we will have neon's electron configuration. Making cations is a little more complicated. When you're removing electrons, the first thing you look for is the largest value of the quantum number n, and that orbital's electron will be removed first. You only use step number two if the values of the orbitals have the same n, in which case you choose the largest l value. So for example, for the neutral gallium atom, we have this spectroscopic notation. If we're going to form a gallium with a positive one charge, we choose by rule number one the orbital with the largest value of n. So we have a choice between the 4s and the 4p. Both of those have the quantum number n equal to 4. So we have to apply the second rule, which is the largest value of l. And we know that the s orbital has l as 0, and the p orbital l value is 1. So we're going to remove the electron from the 4p to form the gallium cation. So we have an argon core, two electrons in the 4s, 10 in the 3d. If we keep removing electrons, we'll make a gallium 2 plus. And now we have a choice between the 4s and the 3d, so we're going to remove from the larger value of n and we're going to have one electron in the 4s, 10 in the 3d, and then if we make the gallium 3 plus cation, we'll have an argon core, no electrons left in the 4s, but still 10 in the 3d. So this is why when we're using the periodic table to predict the charges, we predicted that gallium, a group 13 element, would make a charge of positive 3, because it reaches a fairly stable electron configuration of argon core 3d10. When we predicted the charge for lead, lead was either going to make a positive 4 or a positive 2 cation. And so looking at the spectroscopic notation for lead, the largest value of n comes from the 6s and the 6p, the first electrons are going to come out of the 6p, so when we make the lead 2 plus cation, we have the xenon core, 2 electrons in the 6s, 14 in the 4f, and 10 in the 5d, and both 6p electrons have been removed. That gives us the positive 2 version of lead. If we can continue on and make a positive 4 cation, now we're going to remove both of the electrons from the 6s. So the lead positive 4 has a xenon core completely filled 4f and completely filled 5d.